Well, hello everyone, welcome back to the Prepared Mind channel. It is Zero Dark 30. No special intro today. Because <laughs> there's no internet in the location I'm at. Uh, <clears throat> but I'll get this out to you guys. Hey, uh, is it going to be your way in SHTF or is it going to be their way? Now, there's going to be two, fo two forces, two opposing forces. They're going to be the forces of your will and the forces of the will of others. Just think about where you live. You could live in the country. You could live in the big city. You could live in a very rural area or a heavily populated area. Dynamics will be different everywhere. That's why it's so hard to just say, here's your answer. Here's your solution. This is the way it's going to work. Now, I thought about this a lot. How do you get a hold of, how do you control, control the situation? How do you put yourself in, uh, in control? Well, you can't. Because you do not get to decide what the other people think. Right? The fruitcakes out there. The dingbats. The dipshits. The, <clears throat> the people who are going to be desperate. And folks, that's going to be everyone. And you may feel that you yourself are also desperate. But if you're a prepper and you have food... You have what you need to survive. You have the right tools. You will be nowhere near as desperate as those who do not. So through that desperation, that fear, <clears throat> that weakness that they have, they're going to be the ones making a lot of the decisions. You don't get to decide for other people how they think. You know, it'd be nice. I mean, I can guess what they are thinking based on the situation that we find ourselves in. But that doesn't mean that you get to control their conclusions. Are they the good guys or are you the good guy? Well, human nature, people tend to, especially in a crisis situation like giant riots, no power, no food, no government, people dying. All right, people are going to make decisions that benefit them. That's what they're gonna do. They're going to come to conclusions that benefit them. They will... <clears throat> they will excuse themselves for not understanding what's going on. and It's not my fault. It's not my fault. So I have to do these things. Right? You can't talk sense into someone who's in that situation. Right? How do you talk sense into someone who is completely desperate and out of their fucking mind scared. Right? So we're left with, in many cases, or most cases in my opinion, we're put in a position, a reactive position. We're going to have to deal with the decisions and choices and thoughts that others have. You know, <clears throat> that's just the way it goes. And I can think of a few situations where you can put people in a position where they have to think, behave, and react a certain way, but that's, uh, we'll save that for another time. For this one, we can, <clears throat> we have to realize we're going to be reacting to others, right? If a group is going to march from five miles away through your neighborhood and get to you, you won't know about it, you won't hear about it, you won't understand it until they get there. You know, they're not gonna ask you for permission or input before they come to their decision. So they've already made their decisions. <clears throat> their thoughts are formed and they're just gonna show up on your street. So you have to deal with that, right? It's not your decision, it's theirs. Now, you being a peace-loving person, not wanting to be bothered, not wanting anyone hurt, think that you're entitled right, to be left alone, <laughs> right? Hey, I'm just minding my own business here. Yeah, things are bad. Yeah, lights are out. Yeah, there's no electricity, no power, no food, no water. Yeah, times are tough. Everyone's having a hard time with it. Just leave me alone. That's not how, it's not how it, it necessarily works. 
Remember, it's not your choice, it's theirs. It's not your decision, it's theirs. <clears throat> so they're going to make their choices, their decisions, and take action based on their thoughts, not yours. It's not what we think, it's not what I think. So I have to look and put myself into their, uh, how do we put this, their position, their perspective. So that's, uh, because I've been in many situations, I understand a lot of these feelings and thoughts. When you're hungry, when you're hungry, you think you're starving. You're not, but you're very dang hungry. And when you're starving, you're, <laughs> you're in even bigger trouble. But you, <clears throat> you begin to panic. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. If I don't do something, I'm going to die. In all truth, you'll die of uh, uh, thirst, dehydration, long before you'll die of starvation. But be that as it may, it's the body's way of saying, go get some food. And after hours of being hungry, uh, a person's thought process can change. This is a just hunger, folks. After a couple of days, uh, desperation can turn to something quite horrific. That's an issue. Now, people who live with hunger all the time, say people in third world countries where they're malnourished and they don't do well, they don't act quite the same as somebody who has been eating Twinkies, Ho-Hos, and Cheetos for the last uh, 10 years, you know, all day long. You know, they've had so many Cheetos, their, their skin is artificially dyed orange. Orange man. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> you know, the same goes for hunger as would go for, a f well, it's not the same. The feeling of desperation. People who are scared say they have no means of self-defense. You know, they're going to, uh, they're going to make decisions based on that fear. Once again, it's, um, if you, you think you're going to starve to death, it's because you're going to die. So, if you have no means of safety, <clears throat> you know, you feel like you're going to be killed, especially if there's violence in the area. <clears throat> and the more one sees, hears, or even experiences in the form of uh, physical violence, the more they'll tend to react to it in a way that preserves their life quickly, right? People can become quite deadly. So I want to give you, this is, this is more of a cautionary uh, look at it. What if um, you meet a family and they're, they're very scared? They got food, right? They, they, they're not hurt that way, but they don't have any means of self-defense and there's an, uh, a lot of intense violence. When they talk to you, what are they going to be wanting? Protection, right? When there's violence, you want protection defense what will they do to get it will they lie about their circumstance that is to say will they say and do anything to achieve a level of protection and defense the answer is yeah that's an easy one we're not hurting anyone we just you know we're just you know Where'd you get all that food? Well, we always had it. Well, did you really? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they could lie about anything. Now their thing is they want, after they have food, they want defense. Now, I'm not saying that's because someone has food makes them all, <laughs> means they stole it from someone else. But desperation, right? Desperate times call for desperate measures. And it's not your thoughts. It's not your morality. You're dealing with them, other people. I've always said, always said, other people are the most dangerous thing. Surviving is hard. Surviving is difficult. Uh, I've done it. You guys got to witness some of it there with the RMZ. But um, that's, that's hard enough. But other people are the greatest danger. Right? Rain always falls from the sky. It's not going to rain upwards, right? You know how to deal with rain. You build a shelter. You know, food, that takes care of hunger. 
water takes care of thirst. How do you deal with someone who is incomprehensibly injured and scared and willing to do anything? Right? Um, you've heard the expression lie, cheat, and steal. Well, you can add murder to that. People will become violent in order to protect themselves. If they feel threatened, right, they're going to do everything they can. They'll lie, cheat, steal, and even murder. Let's just say you have um, three riot shotguns, and you know, three self-defense shotguns, and you meet a nice little family, and they're asking for help. They're scared to death. They're scared. They're desperate. They need protection. And you offer to try and help them. It's not your thoughts. You, you're thinking, okay, these people should feel safe. These people should be <clears throat> happy. I'm willing to work with them. Right? They're not a huge burden because they have their own food. They just need self-defense. They need someone to protect them. Right? You're thinking that they should be satisfied, that they should be happy, that they should be grateful, that they should be uh, pleased, calming down, etc., etc., etc. Their thinking is you have three shotguns and lots of ammunition, and they have none. They're thinking they're scared. They're thinking they can't really trust you because they don't know what you're thinking. They're thinking that you should give up a shotgun, or maybe they should cheat you out of one, or steal one, or worst case scenario is right, hit you over the head with a baseball bat and take what you have. Once again, you don't know if this other family had their own food or if they took it from someone else, right? You just know that they're scared. And what they don't have is what they want. When they don't have water, they want water. When they don't have food, they want food. When they don't have self-defense, they don't have self-defense. So understanding that is important for us to know that it's not what we want and we think, it's what they think and their choices and their decisions. And that's why people are they're the huge X factor. Because you can't, I mean, how many people say about their, their own spouse or family members, I really thought I knew them, but I guess I didn't. I guess they, they were much more different than I thought, right? So how could you know anything about a stranger? Especially based on something they tell you in a desperate time. In any event, that'll be it for now. Zero Dark Thirty, John, out.